So, you wanna change your life. Hold up, hold up, that's actually not quite what I mean. I think one of the most powerful things I've learned is that changing your life is not about making big, important choices like quitting the job, getting accepted to college, moving somewhere new, starting a business. But the truth is, if you really wanna change your life, it doesn't necessarily require one big radical change, but instead requires small, meaningful changes every day. Getting 1% better every day counts for a lot in the long run. While there are certainly some big moments that changed my life, looking back, I can see it's the small, little changes and habits that I've adopted that have made the biggest impact on my life and myself. So today I wanna to share nine little habits I've adopted over time that have totally transformed my life. Sure, none are groundbreaking or spectacular or wow-worthy, but it's these little consistent changes that have allowed me to grow and improve. All right, habit number one, I almost hate to even say it because you're gonna be like, oh my God, I'm so tired of people saying this, but that is waking up early. I know you've probably heard this like a bajillion times, but the truth is waking up early has changed my life and there's no getting around it. So here we are. It is one of the habits that changed my life. I started waking up early in college because I realized it was the only way I could get work done. I just wasn't someone who worked well late at night. I loved having a little quiet time in the morning to start my day. And as I got a little older, I used these mornings to start blogging and making YouTube videos while I had a full-time job. And ultimately that led me to being able to quit my job, to work full-time for myself as a blogger and YouTuber. And when I became a mom, these mornings became a very key component to my day, allowing me some time to check in with myself, have a little time for me before starting the day with my babies, where I usually had very little time to myself. And as a mom, this me time has been so important to my mental and emotional health. So overall, you can see just how key these mornings have been for me. Being able to get up early and start my day is a little habit, but it has led to so many big and important changes in my life. Habit number two might surprise you, given the name of my channel here on YouTube, but I stopped drinking coffee when I first wake up. A little while ago, I heard something that totally blew my mind. It, it was that when we wake up, our bodies begin producing cortisol for the first hour of our day. You may have heard of cortisol. It is often associated with stress since we create more of it when we are under stress, but it also helps to regulate our energy. It can make you feel more alert. And the reasons our body produce more cortisol when we're under stress is because when we're in that like fight or flight situation, the cortisol helps increase our alertfulness in these situations. And I actually don't know if alertfulness is a word, but you know what I mean. It's why our body naturally produces cortisol in the morning. The problem is caffeine interferes with our natural production of cortisol, usually causing us to overproduce and then leads to an afternoon slump. Now I'm somebody who has struggled with the afternoon slump so bad for so many years, right around 3, 2 p.m. I'm in a huge slump. I feel exhausted. I want to snack on bad food. I just feel blah. So as somebody who drinks coffee the minute they wake up in the morning, when I heard this, I decided that I had to try it. So for one week, I waited one hour to have my morning coffee and I made sure to have something to eat first. And you guys, it was amazing. The afternoon slump seemed to like almost disappear. Sometimes I would still have a little, be a little groggy or tired at that time. I mean, hello, I do have like a two year old and an infant at home, but it was so much less than before in my afternoons. I didn't get in that major slump at all. All right, next up, number three is eating at home. We used to eat out so much, so much more takeout, going out to restaurants so much more. And not only was it killing my budget, but overall I ate way less healthy and less well. We eat at home way more now than we used to. And I love that it's helped us slow down, spend more time at home. But truthfully, the only reason that this habit has become a habit is because I've also developed the following two habits. One is meal planning. I've gotten super good about meal planning all of my meals for the week ahead of time. I write them up on our calendar so I know exactly what we're having each night. This saves me so much time and hassle during the week because I always know exactly what's for dinner and it makes planning ahead super easy. Not to mention it saves me tons of money at the grocery store because I don't end up overspending or having to go back to get more because I didn't plan. And I have way less food waste as well. So overall, it's just like a win, 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 win. The other key to helping us eat at home more has been prepping dinners ahead of time. Like I said, I have a toddler and an infant at home, so trying to cook dinner at 5 p.m. is basically impossible. I don't know what it is about children, but like, 
five o'clock, they go crazy. So the key for me has been prepping it all around lunch. I get as much dinner as I can ready before 3 p.m. Then when the dinner rush hits, I literally have one or two steps to do. I just have to like warm something up. And now I know this isn't an option for everyone. Many of you don't work from the home, but another thing I do sometimes that could help you in this case is I usually have one afternoon a week that is dedicated to meal prep. So for me, this is usually Monday or Tuesday, but I'll do tons of prep for the meals um, for that week. So I'll slice the veggies, make any sauces, marinate meats, maybe make up some cutlets. This way I have even less steps the following days when mealtime hits. Moving right along to our next habit, which is never go to bed with a dirty sink. I've shared this habit before, and it is honestly the first little habit that I adopted in my life that changed things so much for me that it made me really realize how much little habits can turn into big changes. So to me, there's nothing worse than starting your morning with a dirty sink. No matter how tired I am, every night I make sure my sink is cleaned up. And the reason that this habit works so well is that cleaning the sink is a really little easy task. So even if I'm exhausted, I can convince myself to take five or 10 minutes to clean it. And every morning when I wake up, it sets my day off so much better to walk into a clean kitchen sink ready for the day. And what I love about this habit, it's a true testament to how little habits can create big change because this is a habit I started about four or five years ago. It started with just the sink and then over time, it really became the whole kitchen. I found that taking a little time at night to tidy the kitchen every night was so helpful that I now do a full tidy of my downstairs before bed every night. It just took a small habit of cleaning my sink every night to ultimately create a habit where I now tidy a lot before bed every night and it makes my mornings so much better. I'm a big believer in starting your days right and like starting your day to a messy kitchen or coming down to a mess from the night before can start a day on the wrong foot. Next habit is adding salt to my water. And I know that this sounds weird, but hear me out. Now again, I'm not a doctor, very clearly not a doctor, but I'm just sharing something I learned and how it worked for me. So for so long, I worked on increasing my water intake. Everyone talks about how important it is to drink more water. And so I really, really tried. I was drinking water all the time and I was peeing all the time and I still felt dehydrated. Actually, the weirdest thing for me was the more water I drank, the more thirsty I felt. It was so bizarre. And then I heard someone talking about how plain water doesn't always hydrate us properly because instead of absorbing into our cells, it often just flushes through our bodies without actually entering our cells. Now, there's a ton of science behind this. Again, I'm not a doctor. I'm definitely not a scientist. I'm just giving you my cliff notes here, but basically by adding some salt to your water, you want a mineral rich salt, like a Celtic salt or a pink Himalayan salt. It allows your body to better absorb the water into your cells because sodium is an essential electrolyte. So I've started having a glass of water with a pinch of Celtic salt two times a day, usually in the morning and in the afternoon, and then just plain water the rest of the time. And I can tell you, I feel so much more hydrated throughout the day. I don't constantly feel thirsty like I used to. I'm not like instantly drinking and then having to pee immediately after that. And the issue of drinking water only to need more and more water has totally gone away. I definitely consider you doing some of your own research on this, but for me, after I read about it and I tried it, it has been a huge impact on my life. Next habit is learning to hit the reset button. You know when you're having a bad day, like it seems like everything's going wrong. Your toddler wakes up earlier than usual, then you spill your coffee and the dog tracks in mud and you rip your favorite sweater while you're trying to fix your sweater. Your toddler spills his Cheerios all over the floor and this is all before 8 a.m. and I'm speaking from personal experience. It's really easy for us to take a day like that and deem it just crap. But this is where hitting the reset button comes in. Basically the idea is instead of writing off the whole day as bad or hard or unchangeable because of a bad moment or series of moments, you decide right then and there, right in the heat of things, to push the reset button and start over. Here's the thing. We as people tend to wait for a special time to restart. We wait until Monday to start a new diet, wait for January 1st to start a new resolution or say, I'll try again tomorrow. The reason people do this is because these are like concrete time markers. They indicate past and present. And looking at time this way with distinctions of past and present allows us to disconnect from the past, the setbacks, the failures that happened, and say, okay, that's behind me. You know, it was yesterday or last week or last year. And then you can look forward with a new positive outlook. But here's the trick, guys. You do not need to wait for one of these concrete time markers to do this. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> There's no real difference between starting fresh in the morning versus starting literally right now, but our perspective of it. You can literally start fresh at any moment. Now it does take a little practice. It's something I've been working on pretty much since my son was born, so about two and a half years, but I find that now I can almost immediately 
hit the refresh button at any point and get the same renewed feeling that other people might get from waiting to start fresh tomorrow. Okay, Callie, so how do I do that? Well, not to fear, I will tell you. This is how the process looks. Step one, you're going to acknowledge that you need a reset. So you might be like, okay, today is going downhill quickly. Acknowledge that you're feeling like the day is going downhill or you're feeling flustered or in a rut or grumpy or whatever. Step two is to start the refresh. So, okay, my fresh start starts right now. What happened in the past, it's done, it's over. I can't go back and fix it. I can't put the Cheerios back in, can't unrip my sweater, but it's not going to have any weight on what is coming next. Just because those things happen this morning does not mean the rest of the day will continue that way. Starting now, it is a fresh start. Like I said, it's gonna take a little practice to do this, but the more you do it, the more you'll find how it works and the more successful you'll be at it. And a little trick that I find helps when you first start um, trying to practice doing the reset button is to pair your reset with some type of feel good event. So when you first start using the mental reset button, sometimes pairing it with like a concrete action can help you. So maybe you say, I'm gonna run and get a coffee and then I'm gonna reset, or I'm gonna take a 10 minute walk and then I start my reset when I get home. Again, this helps our brain distinguish the past for the first, the present, so we can move forward and focus on the future. All right, my ninth and final habit is becoming an obsessive list maker. I make lists for all of the things. And the reason for this is I'm just in a season of my life where I wear a lot of hats. I'm a mom and a wife and a homeowner and a blogger and a YouTuber and more on top of that. And there's usually never less than like 500 tabs open in my brain at any given moment of all of the things I need to do and have to get done and all of that. So I've started making lists for everything I need to do, no matter how little. And the reason is because 99% of the time when I think of something I have to do, I'm not in a position where I can currently do it. So what I used to happen is I would think of something I have to do, then I would forget. And then a few days later, I'd remember again that I had to do it, but not be able to do it. And then I would forget. And you see where this is going. So now the minute something pops into my head, I write it down. I've started using the Todoist app recently and I love it because I always have my phone nearby. I can just quickly open it, write down the task, but I also love it because I can use it for brain dumping, which I've talked to you guys about before. Sometimes we just have tons of tabs open in our brain. It's overwhelming. So brain dumping is the process of emptying all of those thoughts out. So whenever I feel overwhelmed, like there's too much to do on my plate, I don't know when I'm gonna get to it. I open my Todoist app and I brain dump just everything I need to do and wanna get done. Then once it's all out of my brain and in front of me as a list, I can start scheduling it out into a manageable way. And this has helped me so much to feel less overwhelmed and be way more productive with my time. All right, my friends, there you have it. Nine small habits that have changed my life. Like I said, none of these are groundbreaking, but these little habits consistently over time have made huge impacts to my life. Let me know a small habit that you adopted that ended up making big, big changes in your life in the comments down below. As always, thank you so much for stopping by and watching, and I will see you all in my next video.